All righty, I think we're ready to start. Claire, over to you. Thanks, Ange, and welcome everybody. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. We've got uh, about 160 people online and possibly 300 to come, so great to see you all. Welcome to our webinar on using the new design rainfall for Australia. For those joining us for the first time, welcome. And for anyone who joined us for our webinars before, welcome back. Today our in-house experts will present a tutorial on using the Bureau's design rainfalls. My name is Claire and together with Angela we are going to job share the roles of moderator and producer for this webinar. Hi Ange. Hi Claire. All good from your end? Perfect, thanks Claire. Awesome. Together we will help make the webinar as interactive as possible. Before we start, may I ask for your attention as we cover off some housekeeping items. Our broadcast today will run for 60 minutes with plenty of time allotted for questions. This webinar is also being recorded and the video will be shared with you via email. For first time webinar attendees, please see some helpful tips on your screen. And more importantly, please note the chat box where you can send through any questions or feedback for the presenters. Please use this, not the Q&A box, to send your questions to us during the session and we will answer as many as possible during the allotted breaks. So if you'd like to test out your chat box now, feel free to tell us your name and where you're dialing in from. So I'm Claire and I'm in Melbourne. And at last, I am pleased to introduce to you our expert presenters, Janice Brown and Catherine Jolly. Hi Catherine, hi Janice. Hi Claire. Hi Claire. Janice Green is the Manager of the Water Accounting and Regulation Section at the Bureau of Meteorology. She has 30 years experience in hydrology, hydraulics and water resource management. Her main area of expertise is in the estimation of design rainfalls and floods and she led the team responsible for the Bureau's derivation of new design rainfall estimates across Australia. Catherine Jolly started her engineering career in local government in Tasmania, joining the Bureau of Meteorology as a hydrologist as part of the water program. She has contributed to projects in design rainfall revision, water resource assessment, flood forecasting and bushfire modelling. So welcome to everyone. Janice, would you like to tell us what you will be covering today? Yes, thanks Claire. Um, what we're going to do, is uh, Catherine and I are going to do a bit of a tag team. I'm going to provide an overview of how the new design rainfalls were estimated and then Catherine's going to give a demonstration of some of the new functionalities on the new design, web, design rainfalls webpage that we've added at the end of last year. Fantastic. And we're about to um, start our session today with a poll. We do like a bit of audience participation. So over to you, Claire, to launch that poll for us. We do. So our poll's away. Our first poll, we'd like to know from you, have you or your organisation used design rainfalls before? So hopefully that poll has popped up on your screen in front of you and um, you vote for A, B, C, D. I've actually got, oh let me check, we've got, oh yeah we've got a heap of people um, voting already, that's awesome. So answer A is 1987 design rainfalls, answer B is 2016 design rainfalls, answer C is both of them and answer D is none of them and you can answer honestly because today is the day that you're going to learn about it all. So it's been 40 years between revisions, so when will we expect the design rainfalls next to be revised? That's a good question that we'll let Janice cover in just a second. We did actually launch the wrong poll this time, but this is good too. <laughs> this is good too. So um, for those of you playing at home, um, we've got poll one, which is uh, on your screen. So that's whether you've used the design rainfall previously and your answer choices are A, B, C or D. Um, please let us know in the chat what your uh, answers are in that instance. And poll number two, which is launched separately on your screens, 
um, which is a different question, but an important one all the same. So please do both if you wouldn't mind. And while you do that, we'll get Janice to answer that question for us. <laughs> yes, so you're quite right. It was 30 years between um, provisions of the design rainfalls. Realistically, I think it's going to be another 30 years. But one of the things we are putting in place is the ability to do minor updates every five or so years. Oh, that's cool. And any new data in this revision? There was 30 years more um, data in this revision, but you're stealing my thunder, Claire. <laughs> Sorry about that. Listen, I, my apologies, I did launch the wrong poll, but I believe I've got the correct one now. So um, there's people underway uh, voting for that one. We've got at least 200 people online, so we'll just wait a couple of more minutes for that one. So um, uh, what else should we look forward to in this talk, Janice? Well, I was going to talk about, as you've mentioned, the additional data that has been used in the new design rainfall, but also the um, new techniques that we've used to analyse those data. And then once I've given a brief overview of how we estimated the new design rainfall, Catherine's going to give us a demonstration of how to use the new um, web pages, which includes a lot of functionalities that people have been asking for. Fantastic. And Catherine, you were an engineer or are an engineer in previous life. Were you using this as part of your work? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, at that time, I was using the... Uh, 1987 design rainfalls, as that was the standard for the urban drain systems that I was working with in local government. There you go. And so you were using it for drainage and for? Um, mostly drainage systems mostly drainage. and uh, yeah, for stormwater drainage. And you've used both sets of design rainfalls? Uh, no, only the one. I've, I helped develop the second one. <laughs> <laughs> You're a user in one and a developer in the second one? <laughs> That sounds like a cookie, doesn't it? <laughs> I think we have used them, <laughs> but not as in, not in anger as yeah. we did previously. Yes, yeah. and lots of pipe design anymore. I'm working in a different area at the moment. Fantastic. Um, in the yeah. chat, we've had a, sorry, Claire, to cut you off there, and here we've had a bit of a mixed response uh, in the chat there, um, ranging actually quite a bit of A's and C's, not so much. Uh, B's or D's, but um, uh, what did the actual poll poll reveal, if you can share those results? Um, so I've closed the poll and I think I've shared them with everybody, but I can't, oh, what can I say? So we had uh, 138 people uh, vote and our um, biggest number was actually for both sets. So that's awesome. We've obviously got some experienced users tuning for this talk. So um, 84 out of 138 have used both sets. And in the no answer, there was only 30 people. So there's a few new users in on this talk, which is just what we want to hear. Wonderful. And just a reminder to our wonderful listeners, if you could please communicate with us. Uh, whether you're asking questions of our presenters or making some comments along the way, please use the chat box and not the Q&A box. Um, Janice, take it away. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Claire. My apologies for launching the wrong poll. That was uh, finger trouble today. <laughs> That's okay. Look, it's great to see that we do have um, a, such a range of people in the audience and people who haven't used um, IFDs before and hopefully will become users or even just learn a bit more about um, design rainfalls. So what are design rainfalls? Even if you're um, one of the people who's never used design rainfalls, you actually are aware of them whether you realise it or not. Design rainfalls are used to design infrastructure from the gases on our houses to the stormwater drains. They're used for stormwater management planning. They're used for floodplain management planning. And at the extreme ends of design rainfall, so the problem maximum precipitation, they're used to design bridges. They're used to design dams. Within the Bureau, we also have some rather specific uses for the design rainfalls. The people in our severe weather sections, they use the design rainfall to determine, to set thresholds as to when they say that a rainfall is going to be severe rainfall. 
The flood forecasting teams use the um, design rainforest to look at the probabilities of the rain that's falling so they can give an indication to state emergency services and other um, people to say, yes, we're going to expect a, 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 a moderate or a high um, flood on different rivers. And also, in both in terms of rainfall and flood forecasting, the design rainfalls are used for post-game analysis, assigning probabilities to um, rainfalls that have been observed. Why do we need design rainfalls? Why don't we just um, take the rainfall data from a nearby um, rain gauge and analyse that to, for, um, to come up with the quantiles we need for design of infrastructure? Well, if you think about it, the probabilities that we need when we're designing structures, when we're planning, are in the order of 1 in 20, 1 in 100, or if you're looking at bridges, 1 in 2,000. If you think about Australia's um, rainfall networks, we're a young country. We don't have the 2,000 years of rainfall records that China has. For across Australia, we've got about 100, 520 stations which have over 100 years of daily recorded record, rainfall records. But if we look for continuous rainfall stations, those ones which measure rainfall at duration for less than one day, we only have three stations with over 100 years of data. Compounding that is we have issues with the quality of the data. Even data, or maybe even especially um, rainfall stations with long periods of record, have poor quality data. And there's also problems with consistency of measurement, whether it's gone from a manually red gauge to a tipping bucket rain gauge. And the other complexity is that the rainfall stations across Australia aren't evenly distributed. We have a lot in the capital cities, but when we get to the less densely populated areas, we have very sparse networks. Another complicating factor is even if you have a rain gauge with 100 years of record and good quality record, you can't estimate the one in 100 probability rainfall using that 100 years of record. Now, various studies have been under, undertaken, both overseas and within Australia, to determine the number of station years required to estimate the one in 100, the one in 50. And what all these studies have come up with is that you need about five times the probability that you're interested in. So if you want to estimate the 5% or the 1 in 20 annual exceedance probability rainfall, you need 5 times 20 or 100 years of record. So that means that if you want to estimate the 1% annual exceedance probability or the 1 in 100 AEP rainfall, you need 5 times 100 or 500 years of record. And as I said before, we just don't have 500 years of rainfall record in Australia. So that's why when the Bureau has estimated the design rainfalls, both the new design rainfalls and the old design rainfalls, we pull rainfall records so that we can get the 500 station years that we need for these rarer um, rainfalls. Design rainfalls aren't new in Australia. The first design rainfalls were made available to practitioners back in 1955. The most recent ones were developed as part of the 1987 edition of Australian Rainfall and Runoff 30 years ago. The old design rainfalls were based on the Bureau's own network of daily red and pluvial grass stations. The data were um, analysed using techniques that were considered appropriate at the time. And if you think back 30 years, for those of you who are as old as me, you probably didn't have a computer of your own sitting on your desk. So a lot of the analysis that was done was manual analysis. Also, with the previous design rainfall, we were only looking at provided for durations from five minutes to three days or 72 hours. Durations less than five minutes or longer than three days weren't considered necessary. And the range of probabilities for which the old design rainfalls were provided was from the 1 in 1 to the 1 in 100. 
I'm just going to make a quick aside now. Both Catherine and I, for the rest of this um, webinar, are going to be using the new probability terminology of exceedances per year and annual exceedance probability. Now, if you want a bit more information on the new probability terminology, um, further details can be found in Book 1, Chapter 2 of the 2016 edition of the Australian Rainfall Model and the hyperlinks provided at the bottom of that, state, that um, slide. The Bureau has spent a considerable amount of time over the past 10 years deriving new design rainfalls to, to replace the old 1987 design rainfalls. It's been over a 10-year project. It's taken 60 person years and it's cost the Bureau around $7 million. The new design rainfalls were released by the Bureau in 2016 and then we updated them in to, we provided two up, an update in 2018 to provide sub-daily rare design rainfalls and increased web page functionality. And these two updates were provided in response to feedback from you, the users, as to what would make it easiest and best meet your needs um, of the design of the new design rainfall. And obviously, as part of our provision of the new design rainfalls, we're also providing ongoing support. Webinars such as this one um, to provide information on the design rainfalls and the web pages, but also on a day-to-day -day basis, um, we provide answers um, to questions and requests for information that are sent to the IFD revision mailbox and the email address um, is provided there. As I said, the new design rainfalls um, that we produced were a mammoth undertaking, um, which took 60 person years. And design rainfalls aren't something which are easy to do. They're quite complicated, particularly when you're doing them for the whole of Australia. And so the team that was working on the new design rainfalls included meteorologists, statistical hydrologists, engineers, GIS specialists, web designers and developers. And it also involved us developing a lot of purpose-built software so that we could undertake quality controlling of the data. We could undertake the analyses that were needed for the new design rainfalls. So how do the new design rainfalls differ from the old design rainfalls? Well, first and foremost, they're based on a more extensive database. And in particular, it uses rainfall data collected by organisations across Australia. The old design rainfalls were based on the Bureau's own database. For the new design rainfalls, we use data from everyone who collects rainfall data across Australia, but in particular, the urban water utilities who have their own dense network of continuous rainfall stations around their water supply catchments. However, unfortunately, although we did have a lot of data, that means we just have to quality control a lot of data because the old adage of garbage in, garbage out is very much true when you're estimating design rainfalls. So we spent approximately four years um, undertaking rigorous and consistent quality controlling of the data. Just to show you visually um, the comparison between the old IFDs and the new IFDs in terms of the database, we had about four, nearly four times as many continuous sites um, that for the new IFDs than the old design rainfall. Daily sites, we had an extra 500. And in terms of the length of record, we had an extra 30 years of data available for the new design rainfall. The extra um, data, um, particularly for the continuous rainfall stations means that the spatial coverage of the rainfall stations that went into the new design rainfalls was much better than the old design rainfalls. The map on the left shows in the blue triangles the daily red stations that were used for the old design rainfalls, the red triangles the daily red stations that were used for the new design rainfalls. There's not a lot of difference as you expect. There was only an extra 500 stations. The biggest difference though is when you look at the map on the right. And that shows that because we've um, nearly quadrupled the number of continuous rainfall stations used for the new design rainfalls, we've increased our 
um, spatial coverage of these stations quite considerably. And you can see this by looking at all the places where on the right-hand map there's the red triangles as opposed to where the blue triangles were. So not only do the new design rainfalls use a lot more um, data, they also use um, contemporary techniques to analyse the data. Now, when we were estimating the new design rainfall, there were some methods that were the same as the um, old design rainfalls because they're stock standard for estimating design rainfalls. However, there were some um, methods which we've used because we now know that it's a better approach than what was adopted for the old IFDs. And the use of the generalised extreme value distribution is one of these instances. Other areas, there's been techniques which are better, but which weren't available for the old design rainfalls, but which have been developed over the past 30 years. And the Bayesian generalised least squares regression is one of these. And as I've said before, you know, the, there's been a quantum leap in terms of the availability of computer power over the past 30 years. So a lot of the um, analyses such as quality controlling, such as gridding of um, information that was undertaken by hand for the old design rainfall, we've been able to do using automated um, computerised processes. The new design rainfalls, as I said, were released in 2016. We have extended the range of duration, so we now go down to one minute. And at the other end, we now go out to seven days. And initially, when we released the new design rainfalls in 2016, we provided them for the sta these standard probabilities. However, one of the things we realised was that although the old design rainfalls just provided um, design rainfalls from one exceedance per year to the 1% annual exceedance prob probability, there's a lot of call for very frequent design rainfalls for things such as water sensitive urban design, the more frequent than one exceedance per year. And at the other end of the frequency curve for the rarer um, design rainfalls, so out to one in 2000 annual exceedance probability, which is needed for the design of bridges. Just as a point, the extreme range of design rainfalls, the problem maximum precipitation, was not part of this revision and they haven't been changed since the they were last um, updated. So the final suite of new design rainfall, we had standard durations from one minute out to seven days. For standard probabilities from two, 12 exceedances per year to one in 2000 annual exceedance probability. And that gives us three classes of design rainfalls. The IFDs or the frequent or infrequent, which replaces the old IFDs, which were provided in the 87 edition of Australian Rainfall and Runoff. But we've added the very frequent class and also the rare design rainfall class. These are available for the whole of Australia, for any point in Australia, and they're available from uh, the Bureau's website, which provides a one-stop shop. And that's a hyperlink there. Please, if you haven't used the new design rainfalls, once the webinar's finished, um, please go to the web page and have a have a play around with what we've um, provided for you. Now, when you take more data, when you analyse it differently, you're going to find um, you're going to find that there are going to be differences between the new IFDs and design rainfalls and the old design rainfalls, and they may be greater, they may be less or they may be the same. And how big the difference is, and whether it's greater or less, varies depending on the region, the duration you're looking at, and the probability. So if you look at the map on the right of the slide, for the case of the one hour duration and the 1% annual exceedance probability, anywhere in the map where there's blue, these are areas where the new design rainfalls are greater than the old design rainfalls. Conversely, any area in the map where the red, where there's red, that's where the new design rainfalls are less than the old design rainfalls. And anywhere which is white is where they're 
pretty much the same. If we zoom into my hometown of Canberra and look at it in a slightly different way, we look at the 2% AEP and compare the old design rainfalls and the new design rainfalls. On the left, we can see that in the areas surrounding the ACT, for this particular duration and probability, there's a lot of red, which means that the new design rainfalls are less than the old design rainfalls. But if we look at the map on the right, which is for the 72-hour duration and the 2% annual exceedance probability, we can see in the areas surrounding Canberra, there's a lot of blue. So for these areas, the, design, the new design rainfalls are greater than the old design rainfall. The other difference there is, is between the new design rainfalls and at site quantiles. Now, if we have a look at this um, rainfall frequency curve, and if we look at the 1% um, the AEP or the 100 ARI on the far right of the graph, the, the red square is the new design rainfall, the blue square is the old design rainfall, and the red curve is the um, the um, LP3 distribution that's been fitted to the, um, to the observed rainfall data. And what we can see is that the, the red square, the new design rainfalls, is not only higher than the old design rainfalls, it's also higher than the at-site quantile estimate. And this is something that we expect. Because there's only 50 years of record, we know that we don't have sufficient data to estimate the 1 in 100 AEP design rainfall. We also know from looking at our records that this particular gauge didn't have sufficient records to go into the 87 or, or the old design rainfalls. So not only are there going to be differences between the new design rainfalls and the old design rainfalls, there's also going to be differences between the new design rainfall and at-site quantiles because they're estimated using different amounts of data, using different methods. So just to quickly um, wrap up, the new design rainfalls are based on a greatly expanded database. Um, the data have been quality controlled, and one of the quality controlling is, this, is making sure that the data all meet the requirements necessary for frequency analysis. The data have been um, analyzed using techniques which are most appropriate for Australian rainfall data, and also that analyze the data so that we do provide sufficient length of record, sufficient station years in order to determine the quantiles of the required frequencies that we're looking at. So the new design rainfalls are much better estimates than the old design rainfalls. However, differences are to be expected not only between the new design rainfall um, and the old design rainfalls, but also to outside quantile estimates. We appreciate that these changes may be concerning for some of you, um, particularly where the new design rainfalls are less than the old design rainfalls or where they differ to your outside frequency analysis. If you do have concerns about the new design rainfalls, please contact us so that we can have a talk to you and walk through why those differences have occurred. Um, and again, if you just send an email to the IFT revision at bomb.gov.au, we'd be more than happy to get in contact with you. We'll share that uh, email address in the chat as well a little bit later on. And we've reached uh, the first Q&A segment of the presentation. So thank you to all of you who have already uh, engaged with us and sent through questions for our presenters. Uh, so Janice, a question came through from Kartik earlier on. Uh, when you said 2,300 new stations, is it within a space of some area or is it all over Australia? Okay, that's a really great question. Um, the 2,300 um, stations, additional stations, the majority of those are the continuous recording stations which are operated by the urban um, utilities, so your Melbourne Waters, your Sydney Catchment Authority. So from that point of view, they're mainly located, and that's that map with um, the red and blue diamond uh, triangle showed. It's mainly around the, um, the capital cities. However, 
There were also quite a number of stations which missed the cutoff of 30 years um, previously, or eight years for the continuous rainfall stations, which now have enough data to be included in. And those additional stations are more um, uniformly dis dispersed across the whole of Australia. Excellent. Thank you for that question. And another one here from David. So David's asking, with the extra 30 years of rainfall data included in ARR 2016, how can BOM determine if rainfall trends are climate change driven or just part of the additional data set? That's another very good question. One of the things we did right at the beginning of the design, um, the revision project, was we had to answer the question, can we use the complete length of record for our analyses, including that extra 30 years of record, or do we need to use a subset? So we did a very detailed analysis of the stationarity of the rainfall data, both at site and on a regional basis. And what we found was there was not a, um, a significant trend in the rainfall data to justify us not using the whole period of record. Now, I just want to be very clear here, that doesn't mean that we are saying there wasn't any evidence of climate change. What we're saying is that because of the complexities of rainfall data, including the length of record, quality of the data, there wasn't, there isn't significant um, there, aren't, there isn't a trend to be identified. Great, that was a fantastic question from David. Thanks, David. Uh, Arun has sent through a question. Is there any plan to update the PMP estimation methodology? The short answer to that is no. Um, a, start, a survey was undertaken um, a few years ago um, to um, dam owners seeing if they would like a, um, the PMP estimates to be updated, and there was a resounding no. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, the reason for that is because they're, they're doing a lot of design already and, and upgrading on the old PMP estimates. Fair enough. Uh, another question here from Johan. Johan is asking, how significant were the differences between LP3 and, and GEV? GEV? Lots of acronyms here, so <laughs> please forgive me. We have uh, our own, we have our own, own language. language. Absolutely. Yep. And actually, maybe maybe for the, the sake of those of us who are not so um, tuned in uh, as you all are, maybe uh, help us with those acronyms too. Uh, the rest of that question reads, and what drove the decision to change? Were other PDFs considered? Yep. Um, that's another great question. For um, for Angie's view, <laughs> LP3 is log Pearson type 3. Right, okay. GEV is general extreme value distribution, and it's the way we fit a distribution to a data set. The reason there were actually very big differences between GEV and LP3, the reason we um, adopted um, GEV over LP3 was twofold. One, there's been considerable amount of work undertaken um, by the University of Newcastle, particularly George Kizira, also the CRC for catchment hydrology in deriving the CRC forge estimates, um, which show that the GEV is a lot um, is a lot more suited to Australian flood and rainfall data. However, we also did our own testing. We looked at um, log normal, we looked at um, GPA, we looked at a couple of others that escaped me at the moment, um, and the, all the tests we did showed that the GEV distribution um, fitted best, which was why we adopted it. Fantastic. Well, we'll take a couple more questions, but just on that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are uh, more than 200 of you with us today, and there are many, many questions coming through, so we do apologise ahead of time if we don't get to yours. We will display the email address uh, where you can contact us for a further offline discussion if you have any burning questions that we can't address during the webinar. So there is another one there from Arun. Uh, will overseas territories such as Christmas Island ever be included in the AIR16 RISD webpage? Well, there are actually about four Christmas Islands around Australia, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you mean. Um, 
The, for the new design rainfalls, we've included um, islands such as King Island and Flinders, Flinders Island, um, thank you to my Tasmanian colleague, which weren't included in the old um, design rainfalls. We have provided um, design rainfall approximations for both Norfolk and Lord Howe Islands. So the short answer is they haven't been included in AR uh, 2016 because we don't have sufficient data and because they are offshore. But if they, if um, overseas territories such as Christmas Island were, did require design rainfalls, we can provide you with an approximation of the design rainfalls. What we do is analyse the available data using the same approaches. Thank you for that. Another question here from Harry. Given climate change, global warming, was any weighting given to more recent data over older data from the same area in determining the design rainfall? Yes, um, that's, the answer to this is the same to the, um, the previous question. They, we weren't, they didn't, because although we did um, extensive analyses both on a site basis and a regional basis, we couldn't find any significant trends which would um, A, require us to provide uh, more weighting on the newer data than the old data or to give us a weighting um, if there had been any trend. Wonderful. Okay, what we might do is move to the next stage of the presentation where Catherine will be uh, taking things away for us. And as I mentioned before, um, to any of you who sent uh, questions that we couldn't address, we will have another Q&A at the end, but if we don't get to you, please write to us. Catherine, look forward to hearing from you. Well, thanks very much, Ange. I'll move on to, um, on to some information about using the new website, um, particularly focusing on the the features that were uh, rolled out last year based on some user feedback. So the first first thing that we updated was the landing page. Um, so we've got the, the website there, which we'll be which we'll share later on. Um, so the first part of the landing page, we've got a product summary for those who are new to design rainfalls and are interested in a bit of a background information. We've got a bit of a summary there. Um, down the bottom of the page, um, and this is only part of the list, we've got an extensive list of the new features that were released um, late last year. So if you're, uh, it's worth reading through those to see if they're useful for your project. Uh, we've also collated a list of the, all the acronyms and references that are relevant to the project. So the acronyms are there. If you're not quite sure what GEV stands for or LP3, um, or a AEP or any of the other acronyms that we use today, um, I recommend going and looking at that. Um, we've got, uh, some, got some explanations there on what they are. We've also collated all the publications right back from the original design rainfalls um, um, through to the problem of precipitation and through to the new design rainfalls. Um, many of them are da available to download through the PDFs if you're interested in following up on the theory and some of the applications of these different methods. Um, the other thing we've added is a navigation panel. So this helps to link all the pages together so you don't end up in dead ends like the old, old pages. Um, so we've got a clear link to the design rainfall system, which is what most of you will be using to access the, the design rainfalls. Um, we have a link to the probable maximum precipitation pages, um, some frequently asked questions, and also access to water data online and clump data online where you can access stream flow information and rainfall information for analysis with your projects. So in terms of the problem maximum precipitation um, that has been mentioned before, um, so this is the, the more extreme end of the, the rainfall distribution. Um, we've got the, uh, the links there again in the, in the presentation, the, in the top left-hand corner. So we've got the, the four methods that are currently available. It's a generalised short duration method, um, generalized, uh, revised generalised tropical storm method, generalised southeast Australian method, and the west coast Tasmania method. And the map there on the left, on the right, sorry, shows the um, the zones where they are applicable across Australia. So all the information that's relevant has been collated onto that one page. And if you require um, the, the methodologies there in the papers, as well as the download, the spatial data files that are required. To, um, to investigate those and, and undertake the estimation. 
Um, so if you're, if you're working in that extreme rainfall area, I recommend you have a look at that website. You can start to make your own problem maximum precipitation. All the data is there, it's available there. Um, done extensive work to update the frequently, frequently asked questions based on the information that's coming through the, the mailbox, project mailbox. We've now got 42 questions that have been answered, um, including how to find the frequently asked question because some, there were so many, some people were having trouble finding the information. Um, we've got information on the design rainfall methods that Janice covered in the first section of this presentation. Uh, we've got information on the comparisons of the design rainfalls. Uh, we've got information on using the new design rainfalls and also the coefficients um, that were released as part of this one. And if, the, if you still can't find the question, that hasn't, your question hasn't been answered, again, feel free to contact us through the, the project mailbox. Uh, design rainfall system. So this is the self-serve portal that we've developed to, for people to access the, the new design rainfalls. Um, we've increased the functionality. Single point search is the one that was available, similar to the old Design Rainfall website. We've now got functionality for multiple points to download multiple points at once if you've got a larger project that you're working on. Um, we can download um, grid, grid extent uh, if that's relevant to your project to investigate the spatial distribution of the design rainfalls for an area. And also, if you don't have the access to the coordinates, we're now able to zoom into the map of Australia and select points and uh, extents from, directly from the map. Now, I'm going to throw caution to the wind and do a live demonstration. Um, so, see how this goes. Uh, I've got the, got the link there for the, the landing page that we'll be working from. And the example that we've chosen is Hobart because that's where I live. Um, we've got the latitude and the longitude of the Hobart rainfall site there. And I'll also be um, using the observed rainfall. Uh, we had a big big rainfall event in May 2018. You may have seen the photos on the news of water running down the main street and cars hitting up in the car parks. So we'll have a bit of a look at that to see how significant it was and what the probability of that was occurring. Right, so here I go swapping to the live demonstration. I um, hope that's coming through okay. Um, so far, so good, I think. <laughs> Please let us know if uh, you can see the website okay or if you are if you are having any issues, write to us in the chat. Thanks. Okay, so here's our new landing page. You can see um, in the top, top centre we've got our navigation panel and I'll be clicking on Design Rainfall Index to, to access the new Design Rainfall System. Um, we've got, here's our new design rainfall system landing page and in this case we'll be doing a single point search to, in, um, to show the new functionality. And so the point that I'll be entering, now in this case I'm using latitude and longitude because that's the standard format um, for um, the projection that the Bureau stores their location data in. But if you've got a different projection, we've also got the easting and northing um, coordinates in available. So I'll enter, enter these. Now remember that the design rainfall grids are um, 0.025 resolution, so we don't need to add too many decimal places, otherwise you know, um, you'd have extra precision. In this case, I'm going to add a label so that I can find the data later. So I'm using the bureau station number there. And we've also added a map preview down the bottom. So if we click the map preview, I can just check that the coordinates I've selected are correct. And there we go, we see that the point right in the centre there, um, and I'm happy that that's at the Hobart rain gauge. So because I'm happy with the coordinates, I'll click Submit. And then we see the design rainfalls are now shown. Now, how do I interpret this chart? Well, I've got the, the duration, so that's the the duration there is in minutes or hours as it moves down and down to days. Uh, so that, that duration is the, the length of rainfall that I'm interested in. I've got the probability up the top in percentage, um, referring to the annual seedings probabilities. Um, so for example, if I needed to design a gutter according to the Australian standards um, uh, 3500 um, for a standard gutter design that's um, five minute duration and we'll have a 5% um, storm event. So in this case for Hobart, our probability, uh, depth of rainfall required for that is 7.07 .07 millimetres. 
Um, so that's how we read those. Now, if you're interested in the very frequent, um, so doing some water sensitive urban design, I click the radio button and I update again. And so now we've got the more frequent probabilities. And this is also where you find the 0.5 exceedances per year and 0.2 exceedances per year. They're equivalent to the two year and five year storms that are still um, current in some council guidelines. So if you're looking for those, they're under very frequent design rainfalls. We've also got the rare design rainfalls available. Now, for some people still back in the, the old system, um, the units in millimetres per hour intensity instead of the depth in millimetres, we can change that there and we've now converted that uh, to millimetres, uh, millimetres per hour in intensity. Um, so the other thing um, of interest, I'll just go back to the, um, the normal probability range and updates. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the design of the old website and using the, the coefficients, um, we've made those available. You scroll down to the bottom um, on the, on the left-hand side, you tick the coefficient box, and that will automatically display up the top another tab with coefficients. And so that gives you a table of the coefficients that are um, for the underlying polynomial, um, and you can, can use those, that information. Now to download these, we've got buttons in the top right hand corner. Um, we've got um, download the CSV, download the um, design rainfall depth, download all, download all the probabilities, download as PNG, download the chart as an image, and the coefficients download as a table. So you can use those in your design software and spreadsheet. Um, so the last thing I'll show here is the observed rainfall. Um, so here's one I prepared earlier because it takes a little bit of time to type in. So this is the, the um, May 2018 event that we had in Hobart. I went through the, the observed rainfall comparison and we're looking at how rare or what the probability of that rainfall event was occurring. So I went through and accumulated the, the rainfall and I found that the highest 10 minute rainfall was 11.8 uh, millimetres. The highest 15 minute rainfall was 16.6 .6 millimetres and the highest 24 hour rainfall was 130.2 millimetres. So significant for Hobart, but probably not so significant for those who live in Queensland. Um, so I've analysed that and I've collated that storm envelope and I've put the relevant durations for the analysis in there as an example. Um, so you can see that they've plotted in the table and it's, it's automatically looked up in the table to see what the, what the probability range is. So for example, the 10 minute storm event for 11.8 millimetres has a, a chance of being equal or exceeded between 5 and 2% probability. You can see that there's quite a few here that are less than 1%. So we really need to look at this one on the rare design rainfalls. So I'll have a look at, I'll change that to the rare design rainfalls and update. Now I'll go to the chart. And you can see now with the red design rainfalls here, uh, with depth of rainfall and duration, and each of these is a different probability. We've got each of the coloured lines is a different probability. We've now got the, the black line of, of the observed event compared to the red design rainfall. So that you can use that um, and put that in your reports. So that's all the, all the live demonstrations. Um, I'll move now back to the presentation to show a little bit more information. So the last couple of examples I've got the multiple point search. So now you have to do multiple point searches. Um, so if you upload a CSV of the coefficients and submit the list, you can download a zip file of the tables and charts. Um, these include the depth, intensities and coefficients for all probability ranges. At the moment there's a limit of 50 points per download. And for the download extent, um, you're able to enter a um, extend search um, in latitude and longitude or in the same for the um, easting northing projection. You can download the relevant probability range with, using the buttons on the top right hand screen. So you can download very frequent the IFDs or the rare design rainfalls or all of them if that's required for your project. It may take some time to download to the browser so just be patient and keep the page open while it downloads. We've got the file naming convention there. Um, so I've got the standard durations and the probabilities that will inc you'll find in those labels so that you can interpret which probability is for which file. And at the moment there's a limit of um, 10,000 grid cells. 
the last feature I'll go through um, just quickly is the map search tool. So again, as I said, if you if you're not quite sure of your catchment area um, and you don't have the latitude and longitude of particular rainfall points you're interested in, um, I've picked an example here of a catchment just to the west of Melbourne called Little River, and I'll. I'd like to get an idea of the distribution of those of the ICs, the design rainfalls across that, that map and across the catchment. So I've selected a range of different points there. And then you can see that in the left hand side that those points have appeared and I can submit them as a multiple point search. If I was interested in interested in an extent search, I can select a rectangle over there. You can see in the background we've got the grid of the, the resolution of the design rainfalls. So then I can check that I'm not selecting too many points for, um, for one one area and one grid cell. And then that that can then be submitted as an extent um, extent download. Um, so that's the end of the live demonstration. Excellent. Oh, thank, thank you, Anne. Back, back to me, Anne. Um, Claire, why don't you launch that poll for us? And um, apologies to those of you who um, played with us in the beginning and answered it then, but um, we will relaunch and, and um, please do um, select your answer choice again. We won't leave this poll open for as long as uh, we do have a couple of questions we'd like to get to. Um, but I think while we leave that open, I might shoot perhaps some of those questions through to you now if you're if you're comfortable with that. Oh, okay, let's find some. There was one earlier uh, from Lachlan. Uh, Lachlan is asking how is the design ISD for the extent function generated? Does this take into account spatial distribution and aerial reduction factors based on the size and extent of input? No, so the when you download the extent, it samples the grids directly. Um, so it will give you a, a, it gives you an idea about the spatial distribution, but the area reduction factors are not automatically applied. This is something that you'll need to do as part of your design process once once you select the relevant catchment area. Thank you for that, Catherine. Uh, another question here from uh, Aditya. How is a storm defined, i.e. what is the duration of gap between two rainfall events is required to define them as separate events? I might take that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was, wasn't so much a um, problem when we were looking at the daily, um, daily um, red stations and for the, um, the more standard probabilities because we use the annual maxima series and that's where um, independence of events is more clearly defined um, just because of the amount of time that's between the events. We did of course look um, at events at the end of December and the beginning of January to make sure it was a um, it was a storm. Where we did have to do quite a lot of work looking at independence was when we were doing some of the more the very frequent design rainfalls where we use the partial duration series rather than the annual maximum series. And there we did a lot of analyses to identify what the the minimum um, time period between events was to identify independence. And rather than go into a lot of detail now, if you go to the, the FAQs and if you um, go under how are the de new design rainfalls derived, there's a paper by Karen Zereb who did a lot of this work on estimating the independence of storms. Excellent. Thank you for covering that question, Janet. How are we going with that poll, Claire? Are we ready to close that one off? Claire, I think you're muted. <laughs> um, I can see from my end that um, the highest answer choice thus far is answer choice A, so single point depth, that's great. Um, remember, ladies and gentlemen, if uh, perhaps uh, answer choice E, uh, something different, let us know in the chat so we can read those out to the presenters as well. Um, Claire, are you there? Hi Ange, sorry, I was playing the poll, that's why I muted. So we had a great response to the poll, we had more than 100 people answer and our, our most popular answer was a single point depth. Is that what you expected Catherine? 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. So currently, the majority of the design applications are small catchments. So only one point's required for those. So it's reasonable to expect that that would be the, the majority of those answers. So that was about 50% of the answers, and the other three were probably evenly split, B, C, and D, and um, I'm not sure if we got any others in the chat. No, we didn't really get anything out oh, in the chat. Yeah. I think we, we, had, we had one mention oh, of the sorry, coal fish. The coal fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. thank you. I think we're up to the summary now, Janice. Yes, thanks, Claire. Um, thanks everyone for sticking um, with us. Just to wrap up, the um, Bureau has released new design rainfalls for whole of Australia. Uh, these new design rainfalls are better estimates because they use more data, they use more appropriate techniques, and they should be used instead of the old design rainfalls. However, because of the additional data, because of the different methods, it is to be expected that there will be differences between the new design rainfalls and the old design rainfalls, and also between the new design rainfalls and at-site quantile estimates. And can I just encourage you that if you do have queries about the new design rainfalls, please contact us because we can discuss with you why there are these differences that may be causing you concern. And as Catherine has demonstrated, not only have we updated the new design rainfalls, we've also updated the web pages so that you can do a lot of self-serve in terms of downloading single point data, multi point um, data and grid extents. Um, and here, as we've gone through, Catherine in particular has quoted um, a number of the web pages that we, we use and they are listed there. Um, for if you want some more information, so for example about the independence of storms or the use of the GV rather than the LP3, there's a lot of um, documentation that we've, um, we've written over the 10 years of this work and that can be found under the FAQs. And again, if you do have any um, queries, if you'd like some more information, please don't hesitate to contact us via the IFD revision mailbox. Over to you, Ange. Oh, actually, over to Claire. So um, Claire will uh, leave us with some closing remarks. You there, Claire? Yes, so on our next slide, we've got the date of our next webinar, which is Thursday the 6th of June. It's a, the Winter 2019 Climate and Water Update. So if you're keen to join us for that one, don't forget to register. That begins brings us to the end of our webinar today. So any other outstanding questions, as Janice mentioned, um, email them into ifdrevision at bomb.gov.au for any questions we didn't get to. And a very big thank you to both Janice and Catherine for your time in developing the content and sharing your knowledge with us. To our audience, thank you for tuning in and joining us today. We hope you enjoy the session and we do hope you'll join us next time. If you'd like to continue the conversation, please use the hashtag bombwebinars in your LinkedIn post. So as we mentioned earlier, this session has been recorded. We will have the video ready for your on-demand viewing pleasure in the next few days, so watch this space. And um, for those who registered for the webinar, we'll send you an email with those links. Finally, but most importantly, we, will, we would like your feedback. It is our aim to bring you the highest possible quality webinars but we can't do that unless you share your experiences with us. So once we close this webinar, a short survey will pop up on your screen. We'd be very grateful if you could in complete that for us anonymously. So once again, thank you to everyone involved in this webinar and for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again. So goodbye. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. <laughs>